a bowl add one and a half cups of almond flour. If you need weight measurements they are listed in the description box. A pinch of salt and a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix that all together until it's fully combined. If you're using a stand mixer attach your paddle attachment. Add four tablespoons of butter at room temperature to a bowl and three quarter cups of powdered sweetener and mix until light and fluffy. You may need to scrape down the sides of the bowl to give it a good mix. Do make sure there's no powdered sweetener left at the bottom of your bowl and then you know that your little batter is ready. A teaspoon of vanilla and 113 grams of cream cheese at room temperature. Mix again and scrape down the sides of the bowl if you need to as well. We're adding two eggs at room temperature, mixing in between. Add your dry ingredients and give it a final mix. I'm using a large nozzle with a pretty design and you're going to see what that's going to achieve. Set up your piping bag. Add your batter to your bag. Generously grease a donut pan or a bundt pan with butter. The reason is your shortcake has a tendency to stick in your pan, so give it a good greasing. This is how your strawberry shortcake is going to turn out using a bundt pan or a donut pan. If you don't have a donut pan, this is how they're going to turn out, and it just looks like a thick biscuit. It's not a deal breaker, you can still enjoy strawberry shortcake. Just want to let you know what to expect. If you're using a donut pan like I am, this batter will make a total of 12 strawberry shortcake. Now I baked mine for nine minutes and if you want yours as soft as mine, you'd go for nine. But there's no harm in you doing 10 and I wouldn't recommend going over that. So nine to 10 minutes is the safest. Once you've removed it from the oven, allow it to completely cool in the pan. Then run a knife or a spatula around just to help loosen it up. I've loosened that one already, but you can see it actually, it actually is quite easy to do. And then remove it. And they are beautifully soft. Whoa, that one was going to break. I also tried baking it in a silicone muffin tray and you'll see that mine has very pretty designs on it and it's actually much easier to remove because the silicone allows you to just remove it without using a knife. And here you can see the difference between using silicone or metal. Slice them in half. This is what they look like on the inside. Really soft. Add a layer of strawberries and this amount of strawberries are not quite a full strawberry. It's about two thirds of a strawberry but it, you'll get some in every bite. And some sweetened heavy cream. I am adding another layer of strawberries to equate to one strawberry, but if you want to lower the carb count, you would just do one layer of strawberries, not two. And finally, dust with powdered sweetener.
to a bowl, add three eggs and a quarter teaspoon of salt and whisk together until lovely and frothy. Grab another bowl and sift 30 grams of arrowroot powder, 20 grams of almond flour and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder together. Give it a mix to combine, then gradually add it a little at a time to the egg mixture while whisking. And doing this will prevent lumps in the batter. Next, gradually add one cup of unsweetened almond milk and whisk in between each addition. You will have lots of air bubbles. When you're done whisking, cover with saran wrap or cling film and let the batter rest for half an hour. While that's resting, set your oven to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. Grab a muffin tray and grease eight cups with butter. Then add about a quarter teaspoon of butter into each and remember we're making eight popovers. Then five minutes before the rest time for the batter is up, pop the muffin tray into the oven. Remove the muffin tray when the butter is melted and bubbling. Give the batter one last whisk and air bubbles will reduce and you'll get an even mixture. Fill each cup to almost full like I'm doing then bake for 30 minutes. Next, reduce the oven temperature to 290 degrees Fahrenheit or 140 degrees with the fan. Stick a wooden spoon into the door so that the oven is slightly open and continue to bake for another 15 minutes. Then turn the oven off, open the door fully and this will dry out your popovers and the tops will crisp up further and hold their shape. When they are cool, it's time to dress these beauties. Dust with powdered sweetener. Here I'm adding two tablespoons of whipped cream three berries of your choice, five sugar-free chocolate chips, and one grated lonely old sugar-free chocolate chip. Over a medium to low heat, add 113 grams of butter and let that simmer while stirring continuously. It will come to a boil and bubble, then turn down the heat to low. Continue stirring and the butter will change color to amber. If you have grainy in the butter, you can strain it to remove that. We need to add sweetener next. I'm using Natvia sweetener because with the rock salt, it's not going to matter if your caramel bars are grainy. You can use any sweetener you prefer, but with allulose and xylitol, you will get the smoothest caramel. Okay, add one cup or 200 grams of sweetener and continue stirring. As the sweetener heats up, it will melt and become liquid like this. And here is the color we have a beautiful amber. When your caramel mixture reaches 275 degrees Fahrenheit, add one cup or 200 grams of heavy cream. Do be careful so it doesn't boil over. Then reduce the temperature of your caramel to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Add one tablespoon of vanilla and optionally if you have it, add one teaspoon of caramel extract. Give it a final stir and those flakes are from my vanilla bean paste. If you're using vanilla extract, you won't have those flakes. And then as the caramel cools, the color will lighten as you see here. You can store it in a sealed jar for a week in the fridge. And here I'm just trying to show you the texture and consistency. To make salted caramel bars, quite simply, 
pour into a silicone mold. Add sprinkles of Himalayan salt and they should sink into the bar. Then freeze for an hour, remove from the freezer, then add more sprinkles of Himalayan salt and this time the salt should sit on top of the bar. Then freeze it again until you're ready to eat them. And this is what they should look like. So pretty! For this recipe, preparation and your setup is key. So first, grease and line a fridge safe container and it can be glass or plastic or even a baking dish like I'm using. It should be medium sized so your bars aren't too thin. I also have paper to go over the bars so I can smooth out the bars easily. Let's prepare the nuts and berries. I'm using 95 grams of almonds with the skin on and 75 grams of pistachios and for the berries, two tablespoons each of dried unsweetened blueberries, the same amount of dried unsweetened goji and cranberries. And that should equate to about half a cup of berries. Add the nuts and dried berries to a bowl, give it a mix and set aside. Time to melt the sweetener and to start off, don't turn your burner or heat on just yet. I'm using a non-stick pot or pan and added 420 grams of sweetener to the pan. And here you see I've got my mixer and my pan ready to go and my nuts and berries are ready. To the mixing bowl add two egg whites at room temperature, a teaspoon of almond extract and a pinch of cream of tartar and I'm adding my whisk attachment and of course you can also use a hand machine to whisk just make sure your bowl is deep. Turn your burners on now to medium low and melt the sweetener slowly and you will see me stir it occasionally and while I'm doing that I just want to say if you don't have a non-stick pan and use stainless steel instead you might have your sweetener crystallized at the edges. To fix that, you can drizzle water along the sides of the pot, but also on this level of heat, it might not even be an issue. Okay, when your sweetener is fully liquidized and starts bubbling, start whisking the egg whites. Then drizzle the liquid sweetener down the side of the bowl with the egg whites. And you can see here, I'm not rushing it. Soon as the liquid is all in, turn off the mixer and here is my consistency. Like soft peaks, which is perfect. Add the nuts and berries and mix it in. I wouldn't even use a machine for this part because then you're going to risk over beating the nougat. So please do use a large spoon instead. My machine went only literally for a few seconds. I added powdered sweetener first to the pan to help with the nougat sticking to the paper. I've seen some recipes use oat fiber, but please don't use oat fiber. It's just gonna make your nougat bitter. Add the entire nougat mixture now and smooth it out, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I added more powdered sweetener to help with stickiness again, then paper on top, and smooth it out as best as I could. Please don't refrigerate it just yet because it's still really hot. Let it cool down first and then you can place it in the fridge and in that way you're practicing good food safety. After about an hour in the fridge, it's ready. See how easy my paper comes off the nougat. Cut it up into 16 pieces and if you have some breakage, just smooth the two pieces together. It works really well. Do store it in the fridge for about five days or you can freeze them. I've got here 195 grams of almond flour. To that, add seven grams of baking powder, a pinch of salt, and 60 grams of powdered sweetener, and I use a blend of stevia and monk fruit. 
Give it a whisk to combine, then for the wet ingredients add a teaspoon of vanilla, 135 grams of heavy cream, 109 grams of water, 3 whisked eggs and 100 grams of softened butter and give it a final mix using a whisk and it will end up looking like this. Using a silicone Twinkie mold, spoon the batter into each mold until it's filled and it takes about 2.5 tablespoons each. Then level the batter off to try and prevent any bubbles. To make the filling, to a blender add 80 grams of heavy cream, 80 grams of softened cream cheese, 15 grams of sweetener and a touch of vanilla. Then blend for about 15 seconds. Add the frosting to a piping bag and you won't need a nozzle for this recipe. And this is what they look like, baked then cooled. I will just show you all sides, they are beautiful. Now, how to create a hole for the filling. Using your tool of choice, measure the length of the hole you want to create. And you will need a tool that is thin enough to leave you with some sponge cake for the outer layer but still allow you to have a great amount of filling. I am not poking a hole all the way through, but there are no rules for the length of the hole. Do be gentle but firm. Your Twinkies will have firmed up a little in the refrigerator but if you aren't gentle you could split them. Next, fill the hole with the cream cheese frosting. You can help it along by tapping the Twinkie if it hasn't gone all the way through. And look, nothing is falling out at the other end. The second method I will show you is similar to what the Hostess factory uses. Leaving your Twinkies inside the mold, create three holes and my tool of choice here is an apple corer. Remove the cutout sponge cake and you can also create a cavity within the Twinkie. I liked this method because it looked like I could get more filling into each Twinkie. Cut out a little lid from the part you removed and place it back into the hole to seal it. Look, you can't even see any filling. I just made a vanilla filling but do feel free to change the flavour to your favourite. 